Newark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Well, there's, you know I'm into sports. I mean, you know that I love ocean swimming. I love kayak, kayaking. I love biking. I love hiking. But I cannot wrap my head around what I saw that you can watch starting this Friday on Amazon Prime. It's called, called The World's Toughest Race, Eco Challenge Fiji. I mean... This could be just about the toughest endurance and performance that you can even think of. And joining me now is a member of Team Onyx, which is the first African-American adventure racing team, Corey Waltering. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. How on earth does somebody get into adventure racing and adventure competition? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, so I'm actually a professional trail and ultra runner for the North Face. Um, and before Eco Challenge, I had never done an adventure race. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What on earth were you thinking? Um, I wasn't. <laughs> had you ever watched the, the amazing race or anything like that yeah i mean i watched eco challenge back when it was on tv you know 11 years ago um and so the, it's just it's really funny so our team captain cliff wanted to put together the first all african-american team to do eco challenge so he found athletes through instagram um, he just went on Instagram and started looking for, uh, athletes of color that he thought would be adventurous and would love to do something like this. And so he, uh, he just sent us all messages. Like we didn't know him at all. Um, and he just sent us messages and he's like, Hey, you know, eco challenge is coming back. I'd love to put together an all black team. Um, I think he'd be a great fit for it. And it's going to be in Fiji. And I was like, oh, well, you know, Fiji, it's going to be warm. There are going to be beaches. That sounds kind of fun. And then I started learning a little bit more about what was going to be going on. And I'm like, I'll think about it. <laughs> but I originally said, yeah. And so, um, yeah. And then here we are. So tell us exactly what the challenge is, what you had to do, and how much time you basically had to do it. Yeah, so the race is about 500 miles, and it is everything from um, trekking to jungle navigation, orienteering, sailing, kayaking, paddleboarding, uh, rock climbing, just a bunch of different outdoor adventure sports. And so even before you get to the race, you still have to do different certifications along the way to make sure that, um, you know, you can handle class three rapids and just different things like that. And it was a bunch of sports that I had never done before. <laughs> so, but uh, that's insane. I mean, even thinking that you can do this when you've never done this. Yeah. And so, but I mean, it, it sounded like fun. And so, um, we found out that we were in sometime around maybe late January, early February. And so then it was like, all right, I'm going to have to go learn these new sports and be able to do them at a very high level to just even start this race. <laughs> so how did you train? What did you, what did you do? Yeah. Um, so one of the big things I started was a little bit more rock climbing. Um, and so after that, it was a lot of mountain biking. Um, and then from there, we also had to do a lot of different things on the water. And so um, we as a team went out to California for a weekend and did some whitewater rafting and kayaking and uh, like the river west the river rescue, swift water rescue stuff, just learning all these things that you never know when you're going to need them. But not only are you doing that, you're also doing things like first aid and CPR certifications and um, just, you know, things that can keep your team alive if something were to happen. 
And one of the ground rules is never leave a team member behind, much like the military, never leave anyone behind. And there was, I think it was in the first episode, I mean, one guy was in such bad shape, I, I thought he could die. I mean, this man was in really seriously bad dehydration state. Yeah, I can, looking back on it, I can absolutely see why someone could be in that state. Um, and so, yeah, but like you don't leave your teammates behind and, um, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest teammate on that particular moment. But, um, you know, that could be anybody at any time, because say, you know, like for me, like trekking is my, like trekking would be something I'm good at. Um, but, you know, it could be that I could just be having a bad moment. And, you know, that's why you have teammates that can help you with it. Um, what, and what so is our trekking? team is very, uh, is basically hiking. Um, okay. But as you're doing this, you're also doing it with like a 30 pound pack on your back and, you know, your supplies and you haven't been sleeping and you're trying to read a map and figure out where you're at because like the course isn't marked and they don't give you directions on how to get to your next spot. So like you have to have someone that's great at orienteering. So um, yeah, it's <laughs> there's so many just little things that each person kind of needs to be a master of to make it work. Did you, how much in advance did you meet your team? Because none of you know each other. Um, so Cliff and Michaela, um, they are a father-daughter. And so um, Cliff is our team captain and Michaela was our crew person. And then um, I'm in Illinois. And then Sam, she is actually a endurance mountain bike racer. And she is also in Illinois. And we didn't know each other before this. And then Chris is out in DC. So I mean, we from you know, just all across the country. And um, they met at one race in, I think it was June, for like two days that they all were able to hang out. I was racing somewhere else, so I didn't get to make it to that. Um, and then we also did like a three day training weekend sometime in late July of last year. And then other than that, the next time we all saw each other was in Fiji. Oh. And so like, we're, we're just spread out across the country and just trusting that each teammate was doing their part in training and doing the certifications and, um, just really trusting that we're all going to get it done. Now you're really out there. You are known for wearing a Speedo during yeah. this competition, which is very brave in and of itself. You are also out as a member of the LGBTQ community and very outspoken. How was that? Was that any kind of issue with the team or how did that all work? Um, that was definitely not an issue with the team at all. Um, and so like one of the big things was, you know, showing that we can have a strong African-American team do this race. But the other part is like showing that um, the LGBTQ plus community can also be out here doing something like this. Because, um, you know, sometimes there's a stereotype of like, you know, maybe we don't want to be outside and getting dirty or whatever. And like, I want to show people like there are plenty of people in the community that want to be out there doing adventure sports, things that are super intense, getting dirty and competing at an extremely high level. Um, and so, you know, maybe I'm, I'm just all for inclusion of just everything and more of it. And so we hope that this would inspire people to get out and try it. Huh. Yeah. What did you what did you learn about yourself doing the world's toughest race eco challenge Fiji? Yeah. Um so this race I mean it will teach you a lot of things about yourself pretty quickly I think. Um but I I think that I figured out that I'm fairly calm under pressure. Um, and so like, I knew that before, but I'd also never raced something that was this long where you're going to go like that many days without sleep and just continually moving. Um, and I think I handled that well. Um, and so because of that, like, I think that I just learned that I'm fairly calm under pressure. 
Would you ever do something like this again? Absolutely. Um, like uh, 100% yes. Um, oh, wait a minute. Was it fun? Was it torture? Was it both of that? Um, it's both of it. It's uh, just learning how to, it's learning how to push your boundaries and be comfortable being very uncomfortable. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And I actually did something um, <laughs> kind of like this after this. Um, just in June of this year, I actually set the fastest known time on the Ice Age Trail in Wisconsin, which is 1,147 miles of just trail running. And uh, I, the, the only thing that really even got me thinking that I could do something like that was by having raced Eco Challenge Fiji. Wow. What, what do you think you would say that people would need to, what qualifications or what personality types or what, what do they need in order to compete in something like this? If, if somebody's listening and thinking, ah, oh, yeah, look, you only live once. Let me try it. I mean, because you're talking all ages, there were people with disabilities. I mean, this was just across the board. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, quite a few of the people that raced had raced some sort of adventure race before. Um, but honestly, I think you just need um, resiliency because um, like it's it's not going to be easy and it's not all just going to be fun. It's going to be really hard. You're going to be extremely uncomfortable um, and you just have to be OK with that. Um, and so like, that is like one of the biggest qualities I think. And then the other thing is just like a can do attitude. Like if you can just move forward, no matter how uncomfortable you are, then, uh, you, you can do it. I remember the feeling I had after running my first marathon and I'm, I'm no runner like you. I mean, I'm just a, I'm one of those, if, if you can run six miles, you can learn to train, you train to run a marathon. It's one foot in front of the other, basically. Mm -hmm. But after running my first marathon, I felt like I could do anything. I felt it was so empowering. I can only imagine how empowering the eco challenge was for you. Ab absolutely. Um, and, you know, I feel like this this is, it's the same feeling. And it's like, you, you honestly feel like you can do anything. Um, and it's, it just makes you wonder what else, like what other adventure is out there that you maybe didn't think you could do, or hadn't really thought about doing. Now you're like, oh, because I did Fiji, I can do this. Now, completely off the topic of, and this is again, debuting on Amazon Prime, uh, this coming uh, Friday, World's Toughest Race Eco Challenge Fiji, and I'm speaking with Corey Waltering. How did you do, first of all, where are you? How are you dealing with the pandemic and the shutdown and all that, especially yeah. as an athlete? Yeah, so um, I am in Illinois right now, and Illinois is not necessarily known for trail running um, or being, you know, super mountainous or anything. I mean, we're flat. And so for me, it, it's, all of the races have been shut down. Um, and so because of that, it's been kind of hard to be at home, just running on the roads around here and training here rather than, you know, going out and exploring and, you know, training for something like an eco challenge or my next hundred mile race or whatever. Um, but it's, it's also been fun. Um, it's kind of like a nice little reset, I guess. So that way I can, when things go back to semi-normal, I can actually hopefully be ready to put up another big effort somewhere. What's your next goal? Um, you know, I'd love to get back into Western States 100, which is like the, one of our most well-known 100 mile races in, um, in the United States. And so I think that I'm just kind of focused on getting ready for that, which is next June. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to get back into that and race that. And hopefully we'll be back to normal by then, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> yeah. We might not be. And so, but one of the cool things about trail running though is um, like after doing something like Fiji where you really don't know how long it's going to be before you get, you know, food again or water again or whatever, um, at least in trail running, it's like, oh, okay, like you may only have 10 or 15 miles before uh, you get your food and water. So it will be okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Corey Waltering. New York's Classic Rock, Q1043.